This presentation examines the mean and variance of a binomial random variable. Recall if an experiment is binomial, we have n independent trials. Probability is always the same for each trial. We call that p, probability of success. And we count the number of successes. And one more thing to add, of course, is the probability of failure, 1 minus p, or what we call q. So here's an example. We're told that 25% of the pieces of a certain type of candy are green. If eight pieces are selected at random, find the mean and the standard deviation corresponding to the number of green pieces. In order to answer that question, we're going to need to remember what the binomial probability formula was. The probability of x successes was n choose x. p, probability of success, we want x successes. q, probability of failure, we want n minus x failures. And we also need to know our formulas for the mean and the variance of a binomial or discrete random variable. Mean of a discrete random variable is the sum of the xp, and the variance of a discrete random variable is the sum of the x minus mu squared times p. So using these things, we should be able to find the mean and the variance of this binomial distribution. So I'm on Excel, and we are going to go ahead and count from 0 to 8. We could have 0 greens up through 8 greens. Our probability, n choose x, p to the x, q to the n minus x. So we're going to do an Excel spreadsheet for these numbers. For n choose x, we're going to type equals combin. n is 8, choose x. And we're going to autofill those all the way down to give me 8 choose 0, 8 choose 1, 8 choose 2, all the way through 8 choose 8. p to the x, our probability of success is 0.25. So we want 0.25 to the x, 0.25 to the 0, we'll get 0.25 to the 1, 0.25 to the 2, all the way to 0.25 to the 8. And don't be alarmed by these numbers at the bottom. Those are just very small numbers, so we're using scientific notation to express them. Probability of failure is 0.75. Failure is red is not green. And how many failures do we want? We want a total of 8 minus x failures, n minus x failures. And we're going to go ahead and copy those all the way down. Now to get the probability, we've got to multiply n choose x, p to the x, q to the n minus x. So that's going to require me to do a product equals product of those three things. And we get those values, and that's our probability. If we add all those up, or uh, put them all down, we have that way. And we want to see what the total probabilities are. Of course, the probability should sum to 1. Let's make sure that's the case. This is a nice little thing that we can do. And indeed, we see that they do. Now, to get the mean, we need the sum of the xp. So we're going to take the x column times the p column. We're going to autofill all those. And the mean should equal the sum of the xp. So it's going to equal the sum of all those. And what do we get? We get a mean of 2, but that shouldn't surprise us. We have 8 candies. The probability of a candy being green is 2, 5. So in a sense, a quarter of them are green on average. So 2 seems reasonable. Now to get the variance, we're going to need x minus mu squared times p. The x value here minus the mu value is 2 squared times p. And we will autofill this down. And the variance, of course, is the sum of all those. So the variance equals the sum of the x minus mu squared times p. So if we sum all those up, what do we get? We get 1.5. And the standard deviation is the square root of that, which equals the square root of that number. And we get 1.2247. So here's our rule. For a binomial random variable, the mu is going to be n times p, which is, again, what we would expect. We had n candies. 25% of them were green. We would expect to get 8 times 0.25, or 2, green candies. Sigma squared is npq. That will be our variance. So for our candy example, again, mu is np. 8 times 0.25 is 2. That's exactly what we had on Excel. Variance is NPQ, 8 
times 0.25 times 0.75, we get a variance of 1.5, what we had on Excel. To get the standard deviation, you would take the square root of that. Let's look at another example. A coin is flipped 100 times and the number of heads is counted. So this time we have an n of 100, 100 independent trials. Probability of success on a given trial is 0.5. So how many heads would we expect to get? 100, half of them are heads, we would expect to get 50. We don't expect to get exactly 50, but on average, if we did this experiment many, many times, on average we would get about 50 heads. So our expected number is a number of trials, 100 times 0.5. That's what we would expect to get, and of course that's equivalent to our notion of the mean of the random variable, mu is NP. Again, there's our formula for variance in general, and here's our formula for variance for a binomial random variable, much simpler for us to compute using NPQ. So, if we have 100 coins tossed, we want to find the mean and the variance that corresponds to the number of heads. So n is 100, p is 0.5, probability of success on a given trial is 0.5. So mu is n times p, 100 times 0.5 or 50. That's again what we would expect. The mean is what we would expect to get on average. You would expect to get on average 50 heads. n is 100, p is 0.5, q is the probability of failure, 1 minus 0.5, also 0.5. Variance is NPQ, 100 times 0.5 times 0.5. So the variance is 25. Standard deviation is the square root of 25, which is 5. We don't want to do this on Excel. We would have many, many, many cells for us to look at. But we can check the answer another way by running a mini-tab simulation. So if we go random 1 million C1, binomial 100.5, and then describe C1. 100 trials, probability of success on a given trial is 0.5. Notice what we have here. The mean of that 1 million is 49.996. But our theoretical mean, our parameter was 50. Our statistics, 49.996. Pretty close. Our standard deviation for our million items was 5.001. But our standard deviation theoretically was 5. Again, we can see those are pretty close. That gives us confidence in our solution. Okay, our next example says that a manufacturer claims 5% of all the items produced are defective. What can be said about a sample of 80 items from this manufacturer? So n is 80, 80 independent trials. We are assuming that the defective ones don't all occur in batches, but are sprinkled throughout. So n is 80, the probability of an item being defective is 0.05. So we want to find the mean and the standard deviation that corresponds to the number of defective items. So we have n is 80, we have p is 0.05. Probability of success, success in this case means defective. So the probability of the first one being defective is 0.05, but that's perceived as success. q, the probability of failure, is 1 minus the probability of success. So q is 1 minus 0.05, 1 minus 0.05 is 0.95. Now we can use that information to find the mean and the variance for this random variable. We know the mean mu is n times p, so we take 80 times 0.05, which is 4. What does that represent? That re represents the expected number of defectives. If we have 80 items in our set, we expect 5% to be defective. We would expect 4 to be defective on average in the long run. Sigma squared is npq as 80. p is 0.05, probability of success. Mean, meaning defective, Q is 0.95, probability of failure meaning good. 80 times 0.05 times 0.95 is 3.8. So the variance is 3.8, but the standard deviation is the square root of 3.8. The standard deviation is 1.9494. And how are we going to check this? Again, we're going to check this on Minitab. So we say random 1 million C1, binomial with 80 trials, probability of success on a given trial is 0.05. We want to look at the descriptive statistics for this data set. You'll notice we have a mean of 4.0015 for my million items, but my theoretical mean was 4. Those numbers are very close. The standard deviation for my million items, 1.9509. The theoretical standard deviation based on the work we did on the previous slide, 1.9494. So that concludes this presentation on how to find the mean and the variance for a binomial random variable.